Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, welcome back to Creative Plan Podcast Network. I said that all loud, I'll have to edit that down a little bit. <laughs> Welcome back to RPG A Day 2018 for the month of August. Now is the fifth year this August. We're again asking tabletop role players everywhere to tweet, blog, YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, and Facebook their hashtag RPG A Day answers to celebrate everything cool, memorable, and amazing about our hobby. And we got a couple different voices, which is great because it's our uh, Friday night Genesis steampunk extraordinaire group. Woohoo! Airship hey. Gallivant on Twitch. <laughs> so guys, so this is your first RPG a day, which is great. We've done it three years, but it's not RPG a day's official fifth year, where basically we just get to ask random goofy questions and get some answers. So for August the 5th, what is your favorite reoccurring NPC? Who would like to go first and feel free to introduce yourself Kelly. and shamelessly plug any social media that you have? Kinesty Girl. <laughs> I'm Kelly. I'm also still here from the Kinesty Girls. I'm also Tap and Tune Two Scouts and Sims. Um, I'm the Tucson Seashore Society. But um, uh, we had this Wednesday night group with the uh, Lady Knights of Adventure, all ladies group, and there was this one imp. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Best NPC ever. Yes, I very much enjoyed that uh, that evil little bastard <laughs> <laughs> and his interactions with the group. My character and him got along pretty well, you know. Although he, you know, he did kill the paladin in one shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the paladin did start it. So, so why was you know, what made him your favorite recurring NPC? Well, just because the way he would interact with us, he was very, um, uh, he was lawful. He was a lawful evil kind of guy, <laughs> but he was chaotic, lawful. you know. Um, but each of the different each of the players had a different relationship with him. You had his protector, which was Golda, our cleric, our, our cleric, our, our good cleric of night, who actually rescued him. Saves him many a time. Transformed into a rat, and she she, she, she took the took magic off the enchantment. Um, the paladin and him hated each other. She was always trying to kill him, and she failed miserably <laughs> in killing him. And then, of course, the uh, um, the warrior, you know, who never says anything, um, tried to help. Oh my god, <laughs> me! I'm like he and I were kind of cool, you know. Like, uh, you know, hey, like, I would have killed that guy if you hadn't killed him for me. <laughs> hey, to be fair, my character, he had threatened to put my character back in the cell. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> my character was in the cell for twice as long as any of the other characters without magic. And she was a bard. So she was very upset not to be able to be pressed to digitate in herself. <laughs> But uh, uh, we all had this different relationship with him. And every time we'd have this interim, he'd be Moodyus! And never oh, let him oh, teach you a lesson. Oh my god, that's a death sentence. Basically, since you guys you know, probably haven't heard of that one, is 
they're all magic users in that group mm -hmm. that are in a magic castle that the teacher of this castle was murdered by some of his evil students because he takes everybody in. Right. And the evil students were destroying the castle because it had all his enchantments empowering it. Once he died, they started breaking down. So like all these magical portals to like hell, heaven, that had safeguards, the safeguards were falling apart. Modius was his familiar. Okay. Now, Modius has this secret agenda. He wants gems because everything in this place is based on gem currency, not coin, because gems are used for components and spells. So he's looking at the group going, give me gems, I'll do what you want. Problem is, he's also the, you know, master. My master! You know, was, he's got a reason that he wants these gems. Right. He's doing a mission that we the group doesn't quite know about. We want the gems for the same about. reason, though. Okay. Because there's lots of magical teleportation circles right. that require you to deposit a gem that you lose. But Modius has another thing that he's doing with the gems as well. So there's this great currency of, they can buy him off to do things and help. So if they get stymied with bad rolls, mm -hmm. Modius will gladly come in and do it. But the problem is that one of the first interactions when they found this rat in a birdcage and they took the magic ring off his tail, which turned him back into the imp, because the evil students trapped right. him in there because they knew he, he works for the boss, not for anyone else. And uh, all of a sudden, the paladin said, well, what do you do? I teach. Modius teach lesson. What kind of lesson? And his scorpion tail went thwack into the paladin's <laughs> neck, to enough to drop her to zero. We were level one. Oh. Yeah, and imp's stinger is like way yeah. overpowered for their level. They're a yeah. level one creature for a group, and as, right. an, as a GM, one imp can take out half of a group with no problem. Especially since they're smart. Yeah. And they plot, and they shapeshift, and then they turn invisible. they got lots of and great points and things. And they fly. And, and in this castle, the groups realize that there's lots of little strategically placed vent holes <clears throat> that a rat-sized creature can crawl in and out because Modis is always popping in and out. And like when Modis doesn't like someone, like an evil teacher, he'll, let, he'll help the group out when it's in his best nature. But he's a little obtuse when it comes to some things because he's been trained to teach... Right. And let people learn the school of hard knocks because that's how true knowledge is gained from his point of view. Because he's a creature of hell and he, right. he was raised by being beaten regularly, so, yeah. What was the name of the fixer in the Shadow Run game that Scott ran? He was Mr. A, Johnson. Mr. Yes, it was Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. That's a common name in Shadow Run. <laughs> Mr. Johnson was a great NPC. He basically, it was, it was, so his shtick was, of course, to give the group their run and mm -hmm. things like that. And so he basically act like he knew what was going on. <laughs> and most of the time he didn't, except, of course, being Shadowrun. There's always the one thing that he didn't quite know right. <laughs> that little, that important, little detail. Last important detail. So, and then so one and then one of the things was that through Mr. Johnson, um, our DM also had us going to different clubs around town to different sections to see the different kind of atmospheric stuff in the Shadowrun area. Mm -hmm. So that I I, I I liked Mr. Johnson. He was me. Especially if a GM plays him really well, yeah. you know, you get that personal feeling that, where yeah. he's not trying to screw you over, he's but shit's going to get left out. Yeah. yeah sometimes no. deliberately, sometimes no. It's, it's not always intentional. Mm -hmm. That's why you get paid the big bucks. It's just business. Yeah. That's why you get the new This is personal. That's what I'm talking about. Um, now, I think my favorite NPC way back in the space software days. We're talking 30 years ago. Um, there was an NPC that was simply called the Tinkerer. And you, you never played in this game. Um, but basically he was he was a merchant. And I guess the I guess the closest thing for modern audiences to think about him would be like Mr. Universe, but with things instead of information. Okay. And the price of his things was pretty much predicated entirely by how much you amused him. So um, you could get some really some good fun. deals, but there's also, if you didn't amuse him at all, you were, uh, I mean... If you're no fun, you're no fun. Yeah, if you're no fun, you're no fun. If you pissed off one of his friends, then yeah. it's like, sure, I'll sell you that thing that will kill you. It looks like the thing that you want, but it's not. 
So I think that was my favorite, and especially recurring NPC who would show up not regularly, not not every time, but probably probably every at least once every story arc. Usually because we needed a thing. <laughs> So it, it it becomes a great you know yeah it's it's kind of in, character in, yeah in the in the quest video games it's like going into town and seeking out the merchant mm -hmm. uh, so which definitely goes back to that GMs don't dick your players over with the merchant be decent mm -hmm. make merchant interesting not this guy out to screw the players mm -hmm. yeah. Although every once in a while he would he wouldn't screw the players sometimes he'd screw a player. Especially if they weren't fun. Okay. Yeah, you know, if they weren't playing the game. So, no cookie for you. I sense air quotes in that game. <laughs> <laughs> What's today's game? Yeah, pretty much. See, for me, I'd have to go with recurring NPCs, one that I've used habitually, like a old pool in the toolbox, which is Splug. Oh! <laughs> I'm just a scoundrel that likes working with people! Basically, in, in many versions of D&D, &D, Pathfinder, uh, Palladium, RPG, I've always used this whipping boy goblin who's been victimized by other goblinoids, the bigger variety, mm -hmm. that if any player takes the, the carrot of make the little twerp a deal, and he'll upgrade from his douchey boss to a new douchey boss, only it's a player character douchey boss, and he'll basically do things. Like when we did the uh, the DD starter set, we introduced him because he Jocelyn was playing a fighter noble, and she basically seduced with charm this goblin. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna use Splug. So of course, Splug does these wonky things. Like he doesn't he pretends not to like being bathed, but he really likes it. He pretends not to like pretty clothes, but he really likes it. He pretends not to like being in charge, but he's actually the guy who's the goblin who sticks out his chest when he's on a job. And, you know, as the group found out when I uh, we revisited the group for our anniversary game, that uh, he realizes that the keep has this magic rug that every time you lift up the rug, there's a silver coin under the rug. <laughs> and, of course, you know, for those that know the historical thing of you leave a coin under your rug to see if the help is honest or not. Well, since most adventurers realize the goblin's just going to keep taking it, you know, you just accept your losses and realize the goblin's going to keep taking the coins. So Splug gets to realize that he's that important. And of course, it's a fancy version for an NPC that will hold the, the donkeys or the wagons or the oak mm -hmm. or the oxen or whatnot. Or run group. messages in town. And... and be really important. Or he's that great NPC that when the group's had that nice break mm -hmm. and you need to bring the band back together, he's the guy that shows up and it has that, you know, that montage scene where somebody's working on something and here comes Splug in his splendid outfit because, you know, that's where he spends all his cash on. Or at least he promises to pay off and only drops off the first payment. <clears throat> because he's not better than the playing characters. He just plays his own character well. And, well, you can't kill him because he's endeared to the group. Except <laughs> love the little scoundrel. Yep. Comes a lot of slag. Slag! Although in the uh, D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition version, he didn't like the perfume as much, but Droop... Oh, Droop, yeah, Droop. Droop yeah, the to second, hang. we wound up getting a second goblin as a servant. <laughs> Jocelyn's jo 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 noble woman collects things. Yeah, so... She collected a hot goblin, too. So, uh, um, he absolutely loved it. He was just, but he was super helpful. He was this cheery little goblin. He was the smallest runt of the litter and realized, I don't have to be beaten every day. So Splug would kind of like... Mm -hmm. Splug had to prove that he was the lovable... The goblin you know, charge. Bobby Singer over him. Yeah. Yeah. I had a player character that collected demons. <laughs> demons. <laughs> hey, you it was just... accident. The first one was accidental. The first one? No, the first was... two were accidental. The third one was kind of done on purpose. There was actually an old RPG where that was actually the theme of the game. Collecting things? Collecting demons, specifically. Oh. The different the different demons had different powers. So it was kind of like and Pokemon, but hellish. <laughs> well, this was, this was actually before Pokemon, a long time ago. And it was based off of um, 
Was it the White Wolf one? No, 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 no. no. It, was based, it, was, it was based off of um, Silver, Silver Bird book. Oh, wow, that is going back, yeah. Where basically the... It was, it was one of those where if you took it long enough, you could almost translate the demons into intelligent AIs that had different power controls. That's cool. So it's you, all about that kind of like you kind of like sync with them, and then they do things for you. Mm -hmm. um, no, not Silverberg. Robert E. Howard. No, the Conan guy. Oh, oh, yeah. the Conan guy. That the guy. Con yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a different. It was a different world, and basically, it was run off of demons. Ironically enough, the first person I ever game with, did D and D with, was like his like great nephew. Oh wow. Because, of course, Conan is the baseline for every fantasy. Mm -hmm. Magic is bad. Swords are good. And this was the exact opposite, where <laughs> magic was everything. And, you know, I think three quarters of the characters didn't even bother carrying a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, when magic is the best multi-tool in your pocket, why bother? Right. I mean, and that, that alone is a great pretense of, like, in D&D, &D, take a level of warlock, because you're trying to be a demon wrangler, you know? Find out those demon true names and use that shit. Because that could come in handy. Being a warlock, not to be a baddie, but to be a good guy. That kind of non sequitur, but back in the day, I mean, more than 25 years ago, I think it was pre-AJ, when we were at the, um, I think we are at the executive still. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a dagger in the art show. Now, one of the things that I never understood about the D&D &D damage scales is that a short sword does 1d6, and a dagger does 1d4. And I understand that, you know, a four is as low as you go. But short sword, d6, dagger, because, you know, most of us are thinking daggers like hunting them. Yeah. D4. I could never understand that. But this artist came in with a dagger, and it was a... It was a it was a it was a delta blade. The base was probably like three inches wide, <laughs> yeah. coming down to like this this just sharp triangular point with this blood groove. And the blood groove by the 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 um, quillians was this beautiful cutwork. Oh wow! And um, the blade had been anodized, and there was this really subtle um, rainbow hue throughout the entire book. And that blade must have been that long and that exactly. wide at the base. It's like, yeah, that's a D4 dagger. Yeah, that's a full-blown yeah. The dagger. name of that dagger was called, was When Magic Fails. <laughs> <laughs> because we all grew up with that old-fashioned D&D. When you were that caster, it's one, two, done. Pull your crossbow or your dagger. That's all you got left. Or your staff. That's, that's one thing I love with 5th edition now is you have cantrips you can keep casting all day long. You know, baby spells that are easily resisted and do little damage except for poison spray. It's like one D8 weight damage. It's like. B, B, Sting, sting, sting. Because that's all I can do. Well, there used to be a cantrip can 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 that was called B, which yeah. would summon a B that you could put uh -huh. on someone's helmet and watch them dance. <laughs> Ow! I was also personally fond of waxing the bottoms of people's shoes. Hey, Grease, that's a good spell. Yeah. I mean, uh, we actually had that conversation in our evil goblin group, because we have a group that's all hobgoblins, bugbears, and goblins. And they actually debated their life because they're fighting this room full of all plant creatures. And they're like, the Grease spell, which slicks everything in a, in a radius, is that flammable? And I'm like, as a GM, I won't say no, but I'll say, what do you all think? But it's going to work both ways. So eventually, three or four levels from now, I'm going to use it on you and torch you all in a room. Are you thinking it's okay at this level for you guys? Because they're like, well, if you were to spread baking grease, but I'm like, you know, guys, I mean, I won't, we won't bring science because I've many times let them light a flask and throw it like a grenade. Because in science, in science, a flask of oil would have to be brought to temp and then thrown in burst into flames like diesel gas, you know. It can't be lit cold. But it's like, what do you guys say? So, of course, that way the group gets their consensus, mm -hmm. and then that's part of the science that will carry on from science that moment. Science is that world. Yeah, that, that is our fiction. We've established that, yes, the grease spell can be set on fire. 
God help them all when that gets used against them. <laughs> I would like the cannonball of wonder. <laughs> it just never hurt. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cannonball yeah. of wonder. And you take a wand of wonder, you mm -hmm. deliberately make a wand of wonder, and then you stuff it inside a cannonball that's frangible. So when that cannonball hits the enemy ship, all of the charges of discharge the cannonball once. of wonder discharge at once. It's like the whole arrow with the bag of holding and the black hole and it's magic and physics. Don't mess, don't put it together. Bad things happen. I love the cannonball. Especially if it's one of those versions of DD where your wizard can keep making them. Or Artificer. Yeah. Which I could continue to make them. Artificer. The first one was don't miss with this one and don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now. Someone drops it as the ship banks and all of a sudden it rolls. Can they catch it in time? Well, if it rolls off the ship, it's okay. But what if it rolls hard enough and hits the rails? Well, then we're fucked. <laughs> But uh, Eberron is coming to 5th edition, which will be interesting, because we'll now have a deep version of D&D with flying airships, magical goggles, and magically powered steampunk contraption people. Which will be nice to have Eberron back in the built D&D world. Yeah, this was the Star Jammer version of Pathfinder. Which, that was a fun one. Yeah. So, uh, that, that covers the reoccurring NBC. And then some. And then some. Hey, you know, if we want to go crazy, we are allowed to go crazy. I'll just edit it off and nobody will ever know. <laughs> or I'll look at it and say, this is gold. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening. <laughs>